I'd like to welcome everyone to this wonderful occasion. My name is Joyce Warner, and I'm a parent, a very thankful parent of a Special Olympics athlete, uh, very thankful for everything that the torch runners do. And I'm going to be giving a little, little tiny speech a little bit later, but first of all, I'd like to welcome everyone uh, who has come here. This is fabulous. The first thing on the agenda today happens to be two wonderful uh, officers. We have Chastity Jackson and Aaron Spilker, and they are going to sing the Star Spangled Banner for us. So here we go. stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting agenda, we are happy to welcome uh, Mayor Beitler. Would you please come forward? Well, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for inviting me to share the Flame of Hope arrival. It's great to be here today, on such, especially on such a nice day. I love the way Abe Lincoln's been fixed up here with his t-shirt and his American flag. I think he would be surprised to see so many stars on the flag, but I also think he would put that t-shirt on himself if he were here today, right? You know, the law enforcement torch run has, has been a part of Nebraska's Special Olympics history uh, ever since 1989, so we're starting to form a great tradition here. The Special Olympics itself, of course, will always have a special place in the history and tradition of, of our city uh, since in the year 2010, of course, we were the site of the U.S. National Games. And that experience, I think, uh, left a, a lasting legacy, a kind of indelible mark uh, on the city that will be with us for a long, long time. It was arguably uh, maybe the greatest event the city has ever put on. One of the keys to understanding the quality of life that we enjoy in Lincoln is the tremendous work that's consistently accomplished by our law enforcement and, and public safety officials and officers. The passion and the dedication and the commitment that they bring to the table on a daily basis is on display again with respect to the Flame of Hope and its arrival here in our capital city and I understand it's on its way to Omaha for the start of the Nebraska Special Olympic Games tomorrow. 
Everybody ready to go? Uh -huh. Yeah. Eunice Kennedy Shriver, of course, was the founder of the Special Olympics. She was a, a great visionary, but even she couldn't really accurately foresee the impact of Special Olympics all these years later. She had hoped aloud many years ago that someday one million of the world's intellectually challenged people would compete athletically. Today, it's actually eclipsed three million athletes. As far back as the 1950s and the 60s, Shriver saw how unjustly and unfairly people with intellectual disabilities were treated. She also saw that many children with intellectual disabilities didn't even have a place to play. And so she decided to take some action. She started out holding a summer day camp for young people with intellectual disabilities in her own backyard. Uh, her goal was to learn what these children could do in sports and other activities and not dwell on what they could not do. Those days at Camp Shriver spawned the Special Olympics movement and as they say, the rest is history. And it's been an incredible history. Eunice Shriver fought through personal tragedy to retain her focus and vision as she pursued these goals. A mere seven weeks after the tragic assassination of Robert Kennedy, her brother, in Los Angeles back in 1968, Shriver convened the first Special Olympics Games at Soldier Field in Chicago. And it was there that for the first time she recited the words that are now known as the Special Olympics Oath, let me win, but if I cannot win, let me be brave. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all again for inviting me and good luck with your journey. Once again, we appreciate very much all those very kind words and, and these athletes are so excited, as you can tell, about uh, Special Olympics. And I tell you what, Torch Runners, the minute they saw flashing lights down by the Capitol, they started cheering and jumping up and down. So they are so thankful for you. So you bet. And I also want to add just a minute about I have to also thank the city of, of Lincoln for the wonderful participation they had in the national games. That was fabulous. I uh, was part of that and uh, helped with one of the venues. And it was. Uh, life-changing for a lot of people in this city so thank you please thank everyone <laughs> okay next on the agenda we have Lincoln Police Department Chief and he promised that he wouldn't say anything to me if I mispronounced his name so I am going to try really hard to pronounce his name correctly Chief Jim Pashan how'd I do <laughs> you did great, you did great. Thank you, Joyce. Good afternoon. Today's torch run highlights your dedication and your commitment to those with intellectual disabilities. Because of your dedication, many children and adults will have opportunities that they could only dream of before. Your efforts inspire, encourage, and give respect and dignity to others. You have been instrumental in changing the general public's perception of people with intellectual disabilities by bringing about more awareness to this cause and empowering others. Not a simple undertaking, but a noble one. The law enforcement torch run for Special Olympics began in 1981 in Wichita, Kansas, where Chief Malai Munya felt this was a way to involve the local law enforcement personnel in their community and to support the Special Olympics. It is the largest grassroots fundraiser and public awareness vehicle for Special Olympics worldwide. The law enforcement torch run transforms communities 
by inspiring people to open their minds and accept and include people with intellectual disabilities. Celebrating differences among all people, recognizing and respecting the similarities we all share. Since its inception, more than 85,000 dedicated and compassionate volunteer law enforcement personnel participate in the torch run through 35 nations, 12 Canadian provinces, and all 50 U.S. states, raising more than 46 million United States dollars for local Special Olympics programs and more than $461 million since its inception. In 2012, the Nebraska Law Enforcement Torch Run Program raised $152,000. This is just outstanding. It is because of your dedication and commitment through your fundraising efforts like t-shirt sales, polar plunge, tip a cop, and the torch run that the world is a far better place for everyone to live. I commend you for your efforts and may the flame of hope only continue to burn brighter. Thank you. Thank you very much. And once again, I mean, we can't say thank you enough to the people who are guardians of the flame. So once again, thanks. thank you. Uh, it is my honor right now to introduce uh, Carolyn Chamberlain, who is the President and Chief Executive Officer of Special Olympics Nebraska. Uh, Carolyn, would you like to come forward and talk to these wonderful officers and athletes and et cetera? Well, thanks, Joyce. Joyce is one of our favorite parents. I love seeing our athletes out here today. You guys. I'm excited this week for you. You guys are going to do great at Summer Games. And thank you to all the runners. Any repeat runners year over year? Thank you for your dedication, Mayor, Police Chief, for supporting our movement. As you've heard a little bit earlier today, that millions of dollars are raised globally for one effort, and that is to support people with intellectual disabilities who 60 years ago would not even consider an opportunity like this. If you were born in the 40s, even the 50s, maybe even the 60s, your parents were encouraged to give you away to be institutionalized because there was nothing that, that, uh, that the medical community felt you had to offer. But that all changed, and I'm so glad it did because the impact that the athletes of Special Olympics Nebraska make on their communities is amazing and incredible. What we have seen is that they are some of the best employees that someone can hire, that they actually like to come to work and they actually do their job. Sometimes that's not always the case with the rest of us, but they are employed at amazing rates. So across our country, Less than 20% of people with intellectual disabilities are gainfully employed, but if they participate in Special Olympics, that number goes up to close to 60%. What does that tell you? It tells you that the work you guys do in supporting the work we do impacts the lives of our athletes in meaningful ways and gives them the tools to be self-sufficient, it gives them the self-confidence, and it gives them the courage to face each and every day whatever comes their way. And it's because of your support to law enforcement, this amazing partnership, you guys are our number one donor in Special Olympics Nebraska. Last year alone, what you brought in to support our athletes was almost $260,000. If you think about that, that's the largest single donation that we get in our state. So thank you for what you do. Your work and your efforts not only create sports and training competitions this week, but all year long, more than 40 opportunities for our athletes in Nebraska to compete. So week in and week out, they're either training or they're competing. They get trained on how to be leaders. We have some of our global messengers here today. They learn how to give a speech. They learn how to represent our movement. They uh, receive health care. They will be screened this week and in August here in Lincoln, thanks to your efforts and what you do. They, um, we have an impact in the schools across our state, to the tune that this year, four high schools in our state 
crowned someone with an intellectual disability as homecoming king. That is because of the impact of what you do and the support you give us to execute our programs. We're making a difference with breaking down misperceptions and stereotypes and creating a different school climate, which is exactly what we need to do to then change community climate. So thank you so much for all you have done. And we are proud to be part of the Lincoln community. We are proud woo, to be um, to be representing Special Olympics and, and honored to have you as our partner. So thank you to our torch runners and our law enforcement supporters. Thank you, Carolyn. And it was so nice of you to say one of our favorite parents. So thanks, 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 thanks. And uh, I brought my son Jeff up here because the next portion of the program is all about Jeff, actually. And uh, I would like you to listen carefully because then you'll find out how important Special Olympics is. And when you are participating in the torch run, you'll see how much difference that makes, not only for my son, but for all of the athletes in the state of Nebraska. Um, we were uh, citizens of a small town in western Nebraska called Grant. I'm not sure whether any of you have ever heard of it, but we were like 18 miles south of Ogallala. So every once in a while, we'd have to make a taco run to Ogallala. And that was one of Jeff's favorite things. If he did well in Special Olympics, he wanted to go celebrate by uh, having tacos at Taco John's in, in Ogallala. So we would do that a lot. So I'm going to, I, I usually give kind of a long-winded speech, but you know, it's, over the lunch hour, it's hot, you guys have been running for a long time. So in our small town of Grant, inclusion was really nothing that was accepted when Jeff started school. And you know, the fact that Jeff has a lot more similarities than differences from all of the other students in the city school there you know, it was sometimes a hard sell. But once he started participating in Special Olympics and became an athlete, the other teenagers and high school people who were also athletes and state champions many times got to looking at him with, a, with different eyes saying, well, you know, uh, he's an athlete just like we are. So they really started understanding the fact that he was a person of worth. Now, I heard Carolyn mention the fact that many of the high schools in the state of Nebraska actually have elected uh, people with intellectual disabilities as homecoming king. I've heard prom king. I've heard prom queen. A lot of different uh, honors. Um, when Jeff was in high school, uh, he was able to earn a letter, an athletic letter. So he got a letter jacket, and uh, it had all of his Special Olympic sports uh, on the letter. So that was really a cool thing. But we were kind of pioneers in Western Nebraska when it came to Special Olympics and inclusion. And I thank God every day for Eunice Kennedy Shriver and the difference that she made uh, for all of the people with intellectual disabilities. Um, Jeff was not um, elected prom king or homecoming king or anything like that, but one of the very, um, uh, very prestigious person in our city passed away, founding father practically, and he asked Jeff, well, he didn't do it, but he wrote down that he wanted Jeff Warner to be his pallbearer. And it would never have happened had Jeff not been accepted by the community. They embraced him because of his ability. And his ability came from the choices and chances that he was given by Special Olympics Nebraska. And, and so that was, you know, one of, I knew right then, you know, that we were accepted in the community. There was still something really missing, though, when you have a child with a disability, and especially in western Nebraska, sometimes there's not a support group. 
and we needed a support group to help us through the day-to-day -day, uh, challenges of, of children. I mean, we had a daughter who uh, did not have intellectual disabilities, and we had Jeff, and you know, we had challenges both ways, and we, we definitely needed some kind of support group. And Special Olympics uh, came knocking on our door, so to speak. And the really cool thing is we were able to talk to parents who'd already been there, done that, and they accepted our son for uh, everything he had to offer. And they could see the champion that is within him. Um, a few years after the, the time when Jeff was invited to be a, a pallbearer, uh, in a funeral in Grant, our daughter was killed in a car accident. And uh, we're thankful it was a one car accident, so no one else wa was injured with her. But it was uh, a heartbreak, an unbelievable heartbreak for our entire family. And she was Jeff's biggest fan and cheered the loudest for him when he was participating in, in Special Olympics. And so uh, we needed a support group at that time, and they answered our call. Um, I do have to mention here that we're, we haven't gone as far as we need to when it comes to inclusion and honoring people with intellectual disabilities, because at this time, someone who I know thought they were saying the right thing, said, well, it's too bad it couldn't have been Jeff instead of Krissa. So even though we have come so far, we still have a very long way to go. And I decided after that comment, of course, I was speechless, as we all would be, uh, but after that comment, I decided, you know, I'll do whatever I can for the rest of my life to help people with intellectual disabilities and to help them be honored as wonderful citizens uh, as they are. Uh, Jeff was a global messenger, and uh, we were going to ask him to come, come up here and say a few words. But um, we didn't really have time to prepare that because uh, Jeff is going to have to have major surgery. He's going to have a valve replaced in his heart. And we were busy at the doctor's office and making plans like this. But he still gets to participate in summer games this year. I, in closing, my part of the program, I would like to share with you one of my favorite things about Special Olympics. And I'll ask Jeff to come up here. Jeff, come here, bud. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay, this is, um, this is one of the coveted Special Olympics medals, all right? You guys have to know that on one side of the Special Olympics medal, is this torch and people carrying the torch. All right, have you seen that? On the other side of the medal is our Special Olympics logo. And, you know, I've never known exactly what it means to everybody, but I have to share with you what it means to me. These are five little people, and I think that this means that we are part of a wonderful organization in five different continents, okay? And if you look at the person here, you have to pretend like this is me. Yeah, that looks a little like me. But I have to share that what, what this means to me is when this little person's arm is down like this. This is the way we were before we met Special Olympics, all right? When this little person stands, hands are like this. This is when we were introduced to Special Olympics. But when you see that little person's hand like this, this is the 
You can keep your medal on if you want. I have to tell you one more thing. It reminded me when he handed me the, the medal back, that gentleman where Jeff was a pallbearer, he gave him a gold medal that he had earned, and he told the family that he was worth his weight in gold. And so his memorial to that gentleman was his gold medal. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I don't have any more uh, closing statements other than a big thank you to all the volunteers, um, all of the people that showed up to participate uh, and to listen to all the stories about Special Olympics. There are sure there are tons of them out there, parents sharing wonderful stories, things that Special Olympics opportunities that they have provided for their children and their athletes. So. Hopefully some other time you'll get to hear other people tell their story. Um, I want to thank all the runners, of course. I think I've done that how many times now? Have you been counting how many times I thanked you? It's very meaningful, though. And uh, all of the runners, all of the Lancaster County Correction and Lancaster County Attorney's Office, uh, I need to thank Kurt Magnus with the Texas Roadhouse. I bet that really disappoints all of you. That's that one. By the way, did you bring your fried pickles? That's my favorite. Oh. So once again, uh, thank you for attending. Um, I have one more little announcement here, and this has to do with uh, Captain Ferringer. Any will transport anyone who needs a ride back to 14th and Vine. Uh, directly after you have lunch in the SWAT bus. All right. I think I want to ride, okay? <laughs> Do you have anything else that you want to share? Okay, thank you.